Bass are popular because they're accessible almost everywhere and fun to chase. In this video, we'll show you how to be successful catching largemouth and smallmouth bass in all seasons in both rivers and lakes. We'll demonstrate different fly lines, leaders, flies, and techniques to catch bass throughout the season. We're also going to help you find them based on the season, which is perhaps the most important part of bass fishing. It's going to be a great journey of discovery, education, and fun. <laughs> All right, we'll get him back in the water. Oh, yeah, nice fish. That fish has already refused that fly, and you're going to have to try just a slightly different pattern. The roll cast pickup is a great cast to use in a lot of fishing situations. This is a beautiful wild trout from a small stream. Just a gorgeous little fish. I say hit that bank. Let's go to that grass bed. The ultimate guide to fly fishing is supported by Orvis Fly Fishing. Algoma Country. Destination Ontario. Main Office of Tourism. Yellowstone Teton Territory. Crazy Rainbow Ranch. Bahamas Tourism, Adipose Boat Works, Global Rescue, Trout Unlimited, Welcome to the Ultimate Guide to Fly Fishing. You know, bass are fun no matter where you catch them. We're gonna explore the seasons of bass because bass fishing is different depending on the time of year and the time of day and what the bass are doing. First, let's look at spring. Bass spawn in spring. When water temperatures get to be about 58 degrees, bass move into the shallows to stage prior to spawning. Then they typically spawn between 60 and 70 degrees. Bass behave differently before and after the spawn. Both are great opportunities, but you have to check your regulations because in some states and provinces, there's a closed season to protect spawning bass. Pre-spawn usually happens between 48 and 55 degrees. As lake or river waters warm up, both smallmouth and largemouth bass begin to move from their deep winter haunts to search for food in preparation for spawning. In this animation, you can see how bass travel from deep water to shallow water areas to hunt for prey. The type of structure they go to will vary depending on the water types and prey availability. They're usually quite aggressive, depending on water temperature, and will spread out in small hunting packs, constantly moving and searching for prey. This corresponds with the emergence of crayfish from hibernation which is why crayfish patterns are so effective in spring. Baitfish are also moving into the shallows in search of warmer water. Bass are trying to get nourishment in preparation for spawning, so they feed eagerly. On sunny days, when the shallow water warms quickly, bass will be found in the shallows hunting for crayfish and baitfish. Look for them in areas of down timber, rocky shorelines, and around rocky islands. Now, I've never done any smallmouth fishing this early on purpose anyways, but we're here to try to see if we can catch some of these pre-spawn smallmouths. Here we are in Maine in May before spawning season. We looked for smallmouth in the shallows on this river and we found this nice one. There's one way back in the shallow water, but low and slow is sure the, is sure the secret here with these early season smallmouths. By using plenty of pauses in our strips, we allowed the fly to settle on the bottom and then dart upward, which keeps the fly moving slower and keeps it closer to the bottom where bass are found at this time of year. Thank you, buddy. When the water gets between 55 and 70 degrees, bass are staging for spawning, building nests, and actually spawning. 
It's important to note that not all bass spawn at once. At any given time, when the water's in the 60s, some bass may be getting ready to spawn, others will be spawning, and some will already have finished spawning. So in the early season, there aren't many insects around. So the fish are gonna be eating mostly bait fish and crayfish. The bait fish are starting to get active, the crayfish are starting to get active. So you wanna have flies that kind of match bait fish and crayfish. So I've got some, some bait fish imitations of various sizes and colors here. And then I've got some different crayfish imitations and a big nymph. There may be a few mayflies hatching pretty soon, so we're gonna try a, a big nymph. If you want to avoid fishing for actively spawning fish, don't fish directly over their nests. Some people don't think it's ethical. The nests are easy to spot. Your best bet is to look for cruising fish, which are usually pre-spawn or post-spawn fish. If you want to target post-spawn fish, which are usually females and a little bit bigger, they'll be found in deeper water, six to 10 feet deep beyond the beds. Males guard the nest, so they may still be on the nest when the females are deeper. The males will stay on the nest up to four weeks, guarding the young from predators. Water's warming up, you can tell they're frisky today. This fly I'm using is a uh, fly I tied for saltwater fishing for striped bass. It's a crab imitation. Got some claws and some rabbit fur, and that's about it. As water temperatures warm and bass complete their spawning, they're exceptionally aggressive and hungry. This is the time to begin trying surface flies like hair bugs. So for a lot of bass fisheries, you probably only need one fly line. And the go-to line, for the most part, is an intermediate line. An intermediate line is a slow sinking line and you can fish shallow with it, just fish with an unweighted fly. And you can also fish deep with it. If you put a weighted fly on, it, it'll pull the intermediate weight line down and you can fish it deep. But if you're gonna be fishing a big lake like this, you're probably gonna want two or maybe three fly lines. I never go without a floating line because I love fishing poppers for bass. If there's any opportunity at all, I'm gonna fish a popper. And then if you're in a big lake, particularly if it's midsummer and you suspect the bass are suspended deep, you're probably also gonna want a full sinking line or a depth charge type line. So um, three lines are great. Probably two is a good idea on large lakes. If you suspect the bass are in deeper water, or if you can't see bass on the spawning beds, they'll likely be in four to 10 feet of water close to the spawning beds. You need to get deeper in the water column and will need to keep your fly in this deeper water throughout your retrieve. So a sink tip or intermediate line is a better choice. Let the line and fly sink using the countdown method as intermediate lines sink at about one and a half to two inches per second. When using an intermediate line in deeper water, make sure you keep your rod tip low and your line tight to the fly, as bass will often take the fly on the initial drop. Watch for the line to tighten or twitch as it sinks. In shallower water, with an intermediate line, just begin your retrieve quicker so the fly fishes at an effective depth and prevents snagging on the bottom. In this early season smallmouth fishing, the water's cold, the fish are gonna be pretty lethargic, so we're gonna fish a subsurface fly and we're gonna to try to move the fly pretty slowly. Oh, nice smallmouth. So he was right in the back on the inside here in this kind of slow, swirly, slack water, the same kind of water we've been catching these guys with a slow retrieve in this cold water. In spring, concentrate on crayfish patterns and baitfish patterns between one and four inches long. Look for the prevailing baitfish sizes, shapes, and colors. They might be anything from a five inch gizzard shad in the south to inch long minnows in the north. Summer is generally defined as water temperatures of 75 to 90 degrees. Bass change their habits and habitat during the summer, so you need to adjust how, where, and what you use for bass fishing. 
So and we're fishing a river today for largemouth. So we got current. Where do you look in a, in a river for largemouths? We're gonna look for some cover that's gonna break the current. Yep. Anything that those fish can get in behind so that they can still have food coming to them. Okay. Something to kind of break that current and they're gonna kind of sit in behind it and just ambush, ambush bait. Okay, and you said the stronger the current, the deeper they're generally gonna hold to get away from the current? So when the current is strong, they're gonna actually, it's gonna suck them to the bottom. Uh -huh. With less okay. current in, in the system, it'll mm -hmm. they'll, they'll come up. Okay. And that's gonna depend on the system that you're fishing now. So some systems will have a seven mile an hour current, yep. whereas another system, three miles an hour might be a strong current. So three miles an hour will suck them down. Okay. In summer, largemouth bass in both lakes and reservoirs will take residence in either heavy weed beds or move to deep water. They love heavy weed bed cover or even man-made structures like docks to hide from predators and feed. Weed beds, fallen trees, and other structure will hold schools of bait fish which a largemouth key in on. In southern reservoirs, some largemouth bass will stay in deep water areas and hunt schooling bait fish, such as shad. You may need to use sonar to locate the bait fish, or you need to find out from local intelligence where bass and bait fish congregate during the summer. Bass can sometimes push bait fish to the surface, especially in late summer. Look for diving birds or swirls and splashes on the surface. This often happens early in the morning or late in the day. In rivers, smallmouth will move into faster water, but it'll use structures such as boulders and drop-offs and rock ledges for protection from the current and predators. Look for them in protected feeding lies near large rocks or logs. Much like trout in rivers, smallmouth will move into less protected shallow water to seek out food such as mayflies, caddisflies, baitfish, and juvenile frogs. They do this mostly during periods of low light, like cloudy days or dawn and dusk. Smallmouth bass in lakes during the summer go to deeper water, but may transition to shallower water at different times of day based on conditions. Unlike largemouth bass, smallmouth do not like water temperatures over 80 degrees and move into deeper water where it's cooler. Typically, they like rocky points, boulder fields, fallen timber, and other structures that'll hold prey. Most of us prefer to fish for them early and late in the day when they may move into shallow water to feed and to avoid predators like eagles and ospreys. For summer largemouth, you'll want a floating line with a steep, heavy taper for throwing big wind-resistant flies. It should be an eight or nine weight. Your leader should be short, three to four feet with a minimum of 20 pound test. Just a level piece of very heavy tippet will work fine, or you can make your own tapered leader. Cast will be short, and you'll need the heavy leader both to pull your fly out of the snags and to fight bass in this heavy cover. For casting into open water in summer, a seven or an eight weight rod is ideal. The flies are gonna be slightly smaller and you won't have to yank your flies out of heavy cover. What is key in summer is having a variety of fly lines to match the conditions. Floating lines work well for top water in early morning or in the evening, but during the heat of the day, you'll need sinking lines to get your flies down to the bass. You're not in the game for summer bass fishing in lakes unless you have sinking lines. For water that's up to eight feet deep, an intermediate line might be enough, but in deeper water, it's far more efficient to use a full sinking or depth charge line, something with a sink rate of between three to five inches per second. You'll want a four to six foot leader, typically just a straight section of 10 to 12 pound or OX to 2X tippet attached directly to your fly line with a perfection loop. Thanks to the growing interest in fly fishing for largemouth and heavy cover, there are a great number of fly patterns available. Frog patterns in deer hair work well, as do hard body plastic patterns. The key to remember in summer 
is that largemouth bass will often be in deeper water and not necessarily in heavy weed cover. For both smallmouth and largemouth bass in summer, whether in shallow or deep water, you'll need a variety of fly patterns in your fly box. For top water, hard body poppers are easy to cast and are very effective, especially in low light conditions. Poppers with concave faces usually work best because of the sound and disturbance they make in the water. Yellow, orange, green, and black are all excellent choices. For bait fish patterns, you'll want to have a variety of both weighted and unweighted flies to help you efficiently probe all parts of the water column based on conditions. Bait fish streamers come in a wide variety of patterns and sizes to match your local bass forage. Of course, crayfish are a major staple of both types of bass. Ensure you have a variety of colors that are weighted in sizes from one to four inches in length. Bass love them fish slowly near the bottom. You may have to vary your retrieve based on the fly pattern. Don't be afraid to experiment to find out how aggressive the bass are. All right, buddy. In the fall, when days get shorter and water temperatures drop below 70 degrees, this can really put bass on the move from deep into shallower water and they might feed aggressively. Bass will be most active in the middle of the day when water temperatures move into a more comfortable range for them. In the fall, both largemouth and smallmouth bass hunt in packs. Insects and frogs are not active, so these fish are prowling for schools of bait fish in both rivers and lakes. In lakes, the primary focus in the fall for both species is chasing large schools of bait fish in open water. They might push bait fish into the shallows, but they're just as likely to be in open water feeding on schools of suspended bait fish or pushing them to the surface. Look for fish around deep shoals or sunken humps where bait fish congregate. If you see diving birds or splashes, cast bait fish patterns right into the boils and retrieve with short, fast strips to imitate fleeing bait fish. You might be tempted to use a floating line, but it's much more effective to use a sinking line and begin your strips immediately because the predatory bass are typically in 1 to 13 feet of water. Get tight to the fly right away because bass may take the fly as soon as it lands. If you don't see any surface action, but spot bait fish schools on your sonar, a good technique is to drift over the bait fish schools and use a sinking or intermediate line. Let the fly sink and retrieve with short pulls with pauses in between. In rivers in the fall, bass will move into the shallows again in search of bait fish. Bass will cruise in and out of the shallows, so cover the shallows and the deep edges nearby. Ooh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Solid fish. Oh, he's taking me down river.